2022 saw some major changes for federal employees. We'll review the top news with Tanya Ballard-Brown, executive editor of Government Executive, and Jason Miller, executive editor of Federal News Network. Welcome to you both. Uh, Tanya, I want to start with you. The latest news is the employee pay raise of 4.6%. How significant is that? Very significant. It's the largest pay raise in 20 years since the G.W. Bush uh, era administration. So um, uh, that's the average uh, across the board pay raise. Though uh, one lawmaker uh, actually wanted a 5.1% increase and uh, was, has been pushing for that. There are still a few things that need to happen, though, before that pay raise actually goes into effect. The president needs to issue an executive order, and then OPM will update their uh, tables, pay tables. But 20 years is a long <laughs> time for them to see this larger raise, and there is still... Although inflation has been at historical highs. It has. And it's um, higher than 4.6%. It, ha it is, yes. And also the, the gap between uh, what uh, federal salaries and private sector salaries is about 24% now. So they're, they're still trying to inch closer <laughs> to closing that, except that gap keeps growing. So, Jason, the return to office is ongoing. Uh, how are agencies handling that? What did you see over 2022? There's two big stories that we followed. The first is obviously, okay, when are we going back? When do we have to be back? And how often do I have to be back? And we've, did, we've done several surveys of our readers and our listeners, and, and they've said, you know, for the most part, they like this hybrid workplace. About 60% said they work part-time at home, part-time in the office, maybe as little as one day a week, two days a pay period. Other people said I work about 30% said about fully remotely. And I think everyone likes that part. I think what we saw over the last year, however, was my agency is different than your agency, and that's not fair. Why can't OPM or OMB or whomever have a standard, hey, a minimum of this or maximum of that? And I think that really got frustrated because there's people who said, yes, I work at a three-letter agency, but I work in HR, and do I really need to be in the office the whole time? So I think there was a lot of that consternation early on. And have you seen that impact recruitment and retention? There's a whole big focus on recruitment and retention across the government. Part of it, obviously, is the diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility piece that the Biden administration has been pushing. But the other piece is understanding that there's a little bit of a bathtub effect that's happening, where we don't have a lot of the new people are there. We have a bunch of people who have been there for 20, 25 years, and that middle is still falling down. And I think they're trying to say, hey, we can offer these benefits. Pay is OK. We can't do quite do as much as pay as everybody else but we have other better benefits. So I think they're really trying to focus on that recruitment piece. Tanya, there's been a lot of controversy around Schedule F. Remind us of what that is and what's going on. Uh, it, the last administration had implemented this new classification for uh, federal employees who were politically focused to reclassify them and basically make them at-will employees, which took them outside of the usual process for removing and hiring and firing. Nobody was actually reclassified, <laughs> but uh, it, they, they were maybe about 50,000 employees who were targeted as such um, to possibly be reclassified under the Schedule F Do you label. expect anything to happen with that in 23? We, it, this open to see, because there was supposed to be some uh, legislation added to the defense authorization bill that would keep future presidents from being able to do this. It didn't make it into that bill. It, next year, new legislation may show up, but currently it just sort of stands as is. Jason. Schedule F is one of those things that is a lot to do about potentially nothing, right? Because the Democrats still hold the Senate, Democrats still in the White House, so any bill even the House pushes through that's now held by the Republicans, that's not going to go anywhere. So I think until the next election, Schedule F is basically a worry, but not a really big, big worry. I think you're going to see Senator uh, Tim Kaine, Jerry Connolly from Virginia, the congressman, both pushing to, for legislation to ensure, as Tanya said, Schedule F can't come back up if there is a next Republican or president who wants to push that. So, Jason, let me ask you about TSP. This is a thrift savings plan where federal employees have their retirement. 
there was a, a lot of problems this past summer. It was a rough year for the TSP. <laughs> and the folks, I know Kim Weaver comes on your show quite often. She's, she's a good person. Uh, she uh, took the brunt of that challenge uh, of, of the modernization effort. They had a new login. They had big customer uh, service problems in terms of calling and waiting for hours. Uh, we still hear today from our listeners and readers, why can't they fix the TSP? Why is this still a problem? Why do we continue to, to not, I'm not able to do this or that? And, you know, big modernization projects, when you talk about technologies, have always been a challenge for any organization. The government gets a bad rap, but you see the same thing in any private sector organization too. And, and you know, the TSP, I think their one maybe challenge or one mistake I would point to is you got to communicate communicate, well, and communicate again when it comes to these big IT modernization problems. Tanya, wrap things up for us. What are we expecting next year, especially with Republican control of Congress, of, of the House? Of the House. Well, I think that, the well, what they've said is that they intend to refocus on waste, fraud, and abuse in the agencies, and uh, some of their priorities are looking in that direction. Uh, hopeful things, uh, though, are that I think Jerry Connolly may get back to pushing for that 5.1% pay raise, uh, or even maybe larger. So um, I think there there were some uh, also some new hiring authorities uh, issued this year under uh, the infrastructure bill and also in the uh, PAC Act. Sorry, for uh, the VA. <laughs> right for the VA, and so there's been some hiring, and some more hiring is is bound to happen uh, in the new year to staff up and help to. All right, we'll Why see don't what have happens. Yes. <laughs> Tanya, Jason, thanks so much for being on the program. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.